There's a lot of buzz around the idea that President Obama could be impeached if he does not receive congressional approval for airstrikes in Syria. Last night, Ben showed you what Defense Secretary Leon Panetta had to say. But tonight, Ben is responding to an Air Force colonel who says reality check got it wrong. Well, the explanation I gave is pretty simple and expressly stated that in the Constitution, the President of the United States does not have the right to unilaterally go to war or to declare military action. It is the Congress of the United States who has that authority. But retired Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Steve Waxman disagrees, saying, quote, Your story is a bit naive. While the Congress has the power to declare war, the last declared war was World War II. So while your piece seemed to be taking a stab at a Democratic president, presidents from both parties have taken military action without the formal approval of Congress, including Nixon, Reagan, and both Bushes. You conveniently left that out of your editorial. Also, think about what you're really saying. You have only considered conventional wars that the United States voluntarily enters. But what about the nuclear bolt out of the blue scenario, where the president has about 10 minutes to make a decision? You think that you can get Congress together to make a decision in a few minutes? You would basically put a stranglehold on our ability to deter a nuclear war. Well, first, Mr. Waxman, let me thank you for your service to our nation. But what we're talking about here is not naive. It's the rule of law. Now, you do bring up an important point about that bolt out of the blue scenario where the president must make a decision quickly to defend the country. And under that scenario, according to the War Powers Act of 1973, the president can act with military force to defend the nation from imminent attack without Congress. In fact, while being questioned in front of Congress, Defense Secretary Panetta referenced this. I've also uh, served uh, with Republican presidents and Democratic presidents who has all, always reserved the right to defend this country if necessary. But the problem with that statement and the bolt out of the blue scenario is that it doesn't apply in any way to what happened in Libya or what is going on in Syria. Libya was engaged in a civil war. It had nothing to do with a threat against the United States. Syria is attempting to force regime change and again, there's no threat to the U.S. Therefore, that scenario, or the right to defend the country, is not in play here. And that's important, because those kinds of discussions can muddy the waters. Instead of playing what if, we need to focus on what is happening. As for this statement, so while in your piece you seem to be taking a stab at a Democratic president, presidents from both parties have taken military action without the formal approval of Congress, including Nixon, Reagan, and both Bushes. So here's what you need to know. You know, you are correct, Steve, that all of those presidents have engaged in military action without congressional approval. And you missed two others, Truman and Clinton. But as I said yesterday, this isn't a partisan issue. It is a rule of law issue. Look, for the past 60 years, those presidents have been wrong. And at some point, a generation of Americans has to make it right. But also, under the second President Bush and President Obama, the situation has become much more serious. And that is because the new way of viewing war is that every country is already considered a battlefield, including our own soil. The power of the president cannot simply go on unchecked because he has a D or an R in front of his name. The separation of powers designed by our founders and our framers, it wasn't forged out of naivety. It was crafted in wisdom and foresight. And that is Reality Check.